We ended off the last video with an introduction into functions. And in this video, we're going to go over a certain type of function, which is known as a linear function. So what exactly is a linear function? A linear function is a polynomial that has either zero or first degree terms. And that means that the terms in our function are terms that are going to have variables that are raised to the power of either zero or one. So some examples of linear functions would be, for example, f of x is equal to 2x plus 3. Here we have a zero degree term here and a first degree term here. Another example would be f of x is equal to x. That is also a linear function. And something like this, f of x is equal to 3. This is also a linear function. Here we have a zero degree term. So let's take a second to look at an example of two different graphs of functions and try and see some key differences between a linear and a nonlinear function. So here we have an example of a nonlinear function. And this function is f of x is equal to x squared. Whereas here, now I'm going to do an example of a linear function. And this is f of x is equal to x. So this darker black line is a linear function, whereas this lighter line is a nonlinear function. f of x is equal to x squared is actually an example of a parabolic function, which we're going to go over in the next few videos. But one of the key differences I want you to take away from this is that we can see in this function, this dark black function, our linear function, it is going to have a constant slope. Whereas in this line here, our nonlinear function, the slope of this line is constantly changing. We have a negative slope at first in this part over here. And then as we get to this part down here, our slope looks like it's actually going to be zero. And then we have a part here where we have a positive slope. So our slope in this graph is changing, whereas in our linear function, we have a constant slope. And that's one of the factors that is going to differentiate linear and non linear functions. It turns out that there is actually a general formula for linear functions and that is y is equal to mx plus b or another way that we can write this is f of x is equal to mx plus b. And this is going to be the general form that you're going to find linear functions expressed in. And the m term in these functions is known as the slope of the line. So m is the slope of the line. And the slope of a line, or the gradient of a line, is going to be the change in y over the change in x, or rise over run. So if we were to draw a quick plane over here, and let's say that we had a line like this and we had two points on our line. We had a point over here and we had a point over here. So the way that we're going to determine the slope of this line is rise over run. And that's the way that you're going to determine the slope of any straight line. We have the rise, which is also known as the change in our y value. And our run is going to be our change in our x value. So let's say that these two points have coordinates of x2, y2, and x1, y1. The way that we can determine our slope is, well, first we have to do the change in rise. And we know that the change in rise is just the change in our y coordinate. So our change in y is going to be our rise. And that is going to be calculated as y2 minus y1. That's going to give us how much our vertical changes by, or our rise. Our run is going to be how much the horizontal changes by. So that's going to be our change in x. And our change in x can be calculated as x2 minus x1. So that is going to be how we determine our slope. We are going to determine the change in our y values, 
over the change in our x values and that is going to give us m. And let me take a quick second to give you guys an idea of how different slopes are going to affect the appearance of a graph. So let's say we have our Cartesian plane here and in red we have one line. Let's say the slope of this line is equal to one. Now we have another line and in this line we have an even greater slope. In this line, our slope is equal to 2. Now let's get another line. This line has an even greater slope. So this line has a slope of 3. m is equal to 3. So we can see that when we have an increase in our slope, the gradient of this line is going to increase. So when we have a very high slope, we're almost going to have a line that looks vertical. So as our slope increases, it's the gradient of this line that increases. And that makes sense because if we have a very high slope, we're going to have a very large change in rise and a small change in run, which means that we have a large change in our y values with little changes in our x values. And we can see that with this green line here, if we took two points on this line, we would have a very large change in our y values compared to very small changes in our x values. So this is going to be the effect of increasing slopes on the appearance of a graph. So we know that m is the slope of our graph. We also know that y is going to be our y value, our y coordinate, or our output value, whereas our x is our input value, that's going to be our x coordinate. So the only thing that you might be unfamiliar with now in this general formula is b, and what is meant by b. So in order to determine b, let's take a second to see what happens when we set our x value equal to 0. So when x is equal to 0, y is equal to m0 plus b is just going to become y is equal to b. So when x is equal to 0, y is equal to b. And what that means is that b is going to be our y coordinate when x is equal to 0. And that is also known as our y-intercept. So b is the y-intercept. And it makes sense that b is our y-intercept because we know that our y-intercept is the point in our graph where we're going to be crossing through the y-axis when x is equal to 0. So when x is equal to 0, that is going to be this point right here along this line. So our y coordinate when x is equal to 0 is going to be the point at which our graph is going to cross the y axis. So our b term in the formula for a linear function is known as our y intercept. So when we have a line that is in this format, we're already going to have a few key pieces of information about that function and about that graph of the function. And the information that we know is we know our y-intercept, and that is going to be this b term. So we know where our line is going to cross the y-axis. We also know the slope of our line. So we know the change in y over the change in x of our line or the gradient of our line. And in addition to knowing the y-intercept, we can also very easily figure out what our x-intercept is. So we can determine where our line is going to cross the x-axis. And the x-axis intercept is going to be the point at which our y-value is equal to zero. y is equal to zero at this point along this line here. So when y is equal to 0, that's the point at which our line will cross the x-axis. We can just set y equal to 0. And if y is equal to 0, we can set mx plus b equal to 0. And since we know m and know b, we can solve for x. And that's going to tell us our x-intercept. So that's where we're going to end off for today's video. And in the next video, we're going to go over the effect of a positive or negative slope on the appearance of a graph.